December, December When you were my lover, lover, my sweetie lover Jiggy, uh. jiggy, heavy, heavy All the girls love me, oh, like money Call me jiggy, jiggy, heavy, heavy All eyes on me, Machiavelli Girl, you got me spinning, yeah, yeah <laughs> <laughs> What's good, man? What's good, bro, bro? Chilling, chilling. How's it going that side? Yo, man, we out here. We, we trying to survive, my G. Tough times. Tough yeah. Times. See, look, you added you had some pounds. You added some, look at your cheeks. <laughs> uh, bro, why you gotta be like that? <laughs> Yo, man, this is Elton Vies. It's my new co-host. Hey, what's up, Elton Vies? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How, how are you coping with this gangster? How are you coping with this South African gangster? Nah, this one is no gangster. <laughs> Today, he collapsed on air. He collapsed. I had to pick him up. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> That's some crazy stuff. Look, man, That's, uh, we haven't spoken in a while, dog, and there's just so many things you've been doing, dog. Like, so many things. I don't even know where to start. Like, how are you feeling, though, about all this success? Bro, it's like. I don't even understand. It's just I'm just moving with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just moving with it. So I appreciate everything, you know. I'm thankful. I I think let's start from the beginning, kid. Like I remember the yeah. time we had a conversation, you know, we're chilling in the penthouse. Um and yeah. you know, she was going to drop on a Friday. Um, you were excited about the record. Keenan was excited. Everyone was just excited, I think, about the album at large touch my blood, you know? Yeah. How do you feel about the success of the song? Like, Fela and Versace, like, did it catch you by surprise? Were you, did you know it was going to play out like that? Yeah, I knew it was going to be big, but to what extent it was going to be big, that's why I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how crazy it was going to go, but it was going to be big. And, you know, when I saw how crazy it was going, I knew that, oh, I did, we did something. Mm. You know, that was like when, when we did our third show. When I saw how the crowd was responding, and I was like, I knew that we did something. So you know, it's. I think that happens at this at this stage. Like I can just, I already see it before the song drops. Like you know, when you've done that overtime, you can already tell. You already have like an idea of what damage the song is gonna cause before it drops. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it drops, the excitement doubles when you now see how people take what you expect yeah. and like double it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they just go crazier than you actually thought it was going to go. And that was what I put the line inside. You know, so it was crazy. You know, it was, it was actually a song that I would like to say an experiment that I knew was going to work. But you know what I'm saying? I knew nobody, South Africa has never had this type of sound, right? And this is the first of its kind. So I knew people were going to like it, but I didn't know how much likeness they're going to have for it. That's just the simplest way to put it. Yeah. Now, did this um, little experiment that turned out very good, yeah. did he bring you any money? What? I made so much money from that. <laughs> <laughs> do you make more money? I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. Nah, I'm not even going to lie. I made some money from that. I'm not even going to lie. I made money from that. I did shows and shows and shows with Slank Deals, a uh, liquor company, uh, so many stuff I can't remember. Oh, that's all. But yeah. That's so it was, it was like. Did what you is get it? By Versace? Did you get like free Versace merchandise? You know what? I actually had like discount on Versace. I remember there's a Versace store in um in Santon. They actually called me like, yo, we have some stuff for you and then you can have to play some percentage off and blah like, oh I give you like ten shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stage. That's insane. That's yeah, insane. so it was really, it was it was like, it was a vibe. I was like I, you know, I was living in South Africa at that time because I, when I was saying the success of the song and everything, I was actually living in South Africa for almost a year. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I go to the gas station and then the gas guys are there, they have the old fella in Versace. I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I've always, I've, always, I've always been a producer of my, all my life. I've never, I, prior to that time, I was never an artist. I was never on stage or on mic. I was always behind the board. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, that time was like new for me to be an artist and I was seeing all those things and I was seeing what how the artist's life is actually and now I just enjoyed all these things so I'm like yeah this is what I want to do I'm not going back to production <laughs> because after that you, you I'm really, singing now <laughs> yeah. 
because after that you've released like a couple of singles you know you know when you you no no, no. I, yeah 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 after that i did i did i think it was like just two songs i actually was an artist on and one of them was uh bus bus and Aaron lennox yeah um, yeah the song i featured on the bass and Aaron lennox. so apart from that you know i've just been on the production set yeah, yeah. But it, but listen, yeah, I'm not the video had a couple yeah. of weird reviews. mixed reviews in South Africa. Philan Versace, yeah, you know, yeah. how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, when the song is big, you know, you have to. That's one of the the you know when they say the gift and the curse. That's what that's the, one of the things you have to deal with as a curse. Because people expect too much with the visuals. They expect you to go and wake Phil out from the grave and put him in the video. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they expect you to come and they like to come and drive a Ferrari. So <laughs> yeah. it's not, you know, it's not it's not actually AK. I think if AK had dropped the video with the song, that, you know what I'm saying? All that expectation yeah. would not have been in the play, but. Because people were expecting so much, uh, you know. I feel like he did his best with the video. He did his best. He's not a director. He just did what he could, you know, hired people he could, you know. But all, if what I think he could have done better, maybe, is like the, the interpretation of, how would I say now, of the song itself in that video. Because, you know, I originally started, I created a song initially before, you know, I did with AK. If, personally, I had a vision for how I wanted the video to look like. I had all crazy Versace, you know, Palazzo in Dubai, that's what we're going to shoot. Yeah. You know, penthouse, you know, class life, tough yeah. life type of thing. That was like my whole vision when I was making that music, like, yo, this sound is so, so nice and it has to just go that level, you know, but. AK had his own idea too, and then I mean, to me, it was okay, it was good. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it was as bad as people, you know, complain yeah. that oh, this video is bad and stuff. Yeah. So, I also think you yeah. went the humble route. Like when I saw the video, I was like, for the first time ever, AK had an yeah to flex on that all out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's exactly because that, that was what I was feeling with the song. Like, yo, when if I'm to make this video by myself. What I'm gonna do with this shit is gonna be crazy. Like, yo, you can't just imagine the Versace Palazzo in Dubai, just walking there with Versace crazy. girls all tripped down in Versace. Everything in Versace in that video is gonna be crazy. Then we have Fela Kuti Shrine in Lagos. We have Fela Kuti Shrine, we should have seen there. Fela Kuti Shrine with the dancers and all the marks on their face and all that. It was just gonna be wild. Like, I had a vision for all that stuff, you know? Yeah. That's it was no longer my son, but it was AK. So. <laughs> no, but AK killed it, regardless. You know sure. what I'm saying? I'll give it to him. Yeah. And, and speaking of AKA and the work that you've done during your time, and not yeah. uh, during the time when you were in South Africa and when you weren't staying in South Africa, how has your experience been when it comes to working with South African artists? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's the same all around the world. Artists are like, they're all different people, you know? Some people are, you know, very easy to work with. Some people are, you know, complicated. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, it changes from person to person, and you have to just know how to. As a producer, it's part of what you you should know how to do. Mm. You should know how to control the situation. You know, whatever session you are, or whatever person you're working with. You know, and shout out to the South African artists. Like ninety percent of everybody I've worked with are cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, 10%. no problem. No, yeah. there's some, there's some, there's some weirdos. <laughs> there were <was> some weirdos. <laughs> but you know nah, what? Nah, but most people were cool. Okay. And I, I know yeah. we spoke about this once, but I'm gonna bring it up. Like the fact that when you when you work, money comes first. Um, yeah. Contract the business part comes first. And yeah. in South Africa, we have a culture of negotiating. You know. I look out for me, yeah. you know, like... I know, I know that. Did you get your yeah, full rates sure. yet? What, come again? Did you get your full rates with the artists you worked with? Um, especially in South Africa, I kind of like, you know, I didn't really, you know, didn't really go crazy with the money part of things. I was like, yo, 
I really want to make music with you guys, you know. Even in South Africa, I wasn't doing like pay money first before work. I was like, let's work, let's work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then when we work, you know, if I really like yourself, I might I be pay like after the money. That I, I don't really care about the money, though, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I <clears throat> I actually did like I remember, but sometimes there was a time I did a song. I'm not gonna mention the artist. I did a song with an artist and. The label when it was time to play, our label was going left, right, center, left, right, center. They said, oh, we want to pay this. Oh, we want to do this. I was like, yo, are you guys going to pay this money or not? If you're not going to pay, it's okay. I just And because of that, I'm going to tell you she had a smash record, like a hit record, ready to go. And because of that, she lost that. I just literally just took the song out like, I'm not interested in it. She had like it. record. That record would have probably been the biggest record in South Africa right now. As we speak, like that crazy. Because you know, when I was Africa, I really, really studied. I studied the market. I studied the sound. Like, you know, I studied the sound, and I felt like, yo, I have something that when I, if I sit down in this market and I really engage and drop music, it's gonna be a massive shutdown all year yeah. round. You know what I'm saying? And I was creating so much music, and some of the music I created, I'm putting them together um, on the project that I'm gonna drop soon. Yeah, that, that I'm titling the South Afrobeats project. Oh, so, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Who is, is it? La Sauce? No, La Sauce is cool. I forgot my girl. Okay, no, but it's not La Sauce. It's not La Sauce. La Sauce is my like, it's my home. She's she's cool. I'm just you thinking about that kind of problem. problems, you know. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> so, um, so no, what I'm saying is, I, I, I had so much, so much music done in South Africa. You feel me? I, it's like uh, I, I created a new genre out of make the music I was making in South Africa, which was the blend of like South African sounds and Nigerian sound, Afrobeat. And I made it an Afrobeat. Uh, I named it South Afrobeat. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, which is like a whole new sound to everybody. It's going to be crazy. The first type of it is dropping tomorrow. That's with Casper. Yeah. You feel me? That's e Wallet with Casper. So you guys will get to have an idea of what I'm talking about when you, when you hear the record. It's, it's, it's crazy. I have one with Shima Josie. I have another one with AK. I have with Lady Zama. I have, you know, I have, um, I have something with Sam Piso Oto. It works right now. You know, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of stuff. It's going to be crazy. You guys, I just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just waiting. <laughs> I just That's wait. sick, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. What What would you say happened to that song with Fister's mix song? Because we we really played it a lot here in South Africa. Uh, For real? Song, that ginger song, we really pumped it a lot. I know Heavy K at Restarts also told me that he thought it was a fire song. Like what? Because mm. the song didn't blow up as I thought it was going to blow up, you know. And and you were also being on production and also as an artist. With Fistus. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no, first I didn't produce at all. I, I never produced that song. So. That's one thing you need to understand. Like wh when I produce a song, I feel like I have more control of how the success of the song is gonna be. Do you understand? When I produce a song, it's like the success of that song is more like I'm in charge of it more. If this, if I want to make a song blow, I have to like really be involved in the production. Mm. You got what I'm saying? So, but when you just bring a beat and I just jump on it, like I'm not really in control of that. You feel what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just play my part and then, you know, the producer plays his part. So, but it's only like two occasions where I've had people, I like sang on people's beats just twice. You feel me? So that's why, you know, if you hear that a song doesn't really do well and I'm on it, it's probably because I didn't produce it. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, so I, you know, and I feel like I don't even know what happened with that song. The beat was good, the beat was really good. This song was good, you know what I'm saying? Amazing well. But I just think, I just think, to be honest, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I can't just pinpoint what went wrong, but I think that if they had shot a video for it, it probably would have made the song go further. Yeah, because people, you know, I think people just needed to be more aware about the song. Yes. That's what happened in the world. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Now, I want to go back a bit. I mean, you name dropped the whole South Africa right now. Yeah. So, yeah. 
done things to wear to your show, my Josies. And I think when you were talking about Fela and Versace, I just automatically yeah. thought about Casper. And you just mentioned that you are about to drop a song with Casper. Now, what I want yeah. to know is you have now worked with both of them. You've worked with AKA and you've worked with Casper. After working yeah. with both and experiencing the different personalities, what's your yeah. take on the beef that they still have? <laughs> I mean, um, I would just say this, you know, at the end of the day, we're all family. You feel me? Everybody, we're all family. We're all Africans. Huh? You know, for Kaslan, AK, they're all brothers. They're, you guys are South African, you're brothers. You know, and in a family, there's always going to be siblings fighting each other and stuff. So, you feel me? I, you know when when one brother is fighting another brother, it's, if I don't know how you guys do, but where I'm from in Nigeria, you don't take sides when two of your siblings are fighting. All you gotta do is just set, try to make them settle, or you know you don't pick sides. Mm. And that's exactly where I stand. You know what I'm saying? It's it's normal for them to be different. Trust me. You don't be surprised after the lockdown. You see them together in the club drinking in Cubana or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> To doing Snapchat I'm like, hey, we're cool now. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying it's just normal. And I think right now they're just having their time where they just have their differences and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, working with both of them, my experiences, they're all cool as fuck. They're cool people. They know they don't have no problem when it comes to work. You know, Casper is like very, very, you know, he's a very humble guy. Mm -hmm. I would say that he's a very humble guy, very positive guy. And, you know, I really like that about him. And, you know, AK is very, very hands-on. He's very, you know, yeah, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, you know. And sometimes you always need that type of energy, you know. <laughs> so he's very energetic, he's very hyper, you know. Yeah. You feel me? So it's all, it's all, you know, there's no, there's no, I want to say, there's no preference to, there's no, I wouldn't say I prefer working with one person yeah. over the other because everybody has their own vibes and their own energy that they bring when you work, you feel. So, yeah. That, that gets that's you. pretty okay. much it. Yeah. Now, still, still talking about beef and just negative vibes and just vibes at large, you know, like I feel Yeah. Th there was a moment that happened last year, especially with Nigeria and South Africa on Twitter during the yeah. that resurfacing of a video that led to Tiwa pulling out from the DSTV delicious fest you know you also had your input burner boy had his input aka and yeah. ended up having you know that altercation you know yeah your, your, your thoughts during that moment because i still believe that really caused us to move back a, a little rift. bit more a rift between us uh, especially yeah your thoughts on that yeah um i feel it's one of those things the media blew out of proportion like you know it's just one of those things that the media just make people turn their back against each other for because from everything that we saw if you dig deep into that stuff like 90 percent of the clips that were circulating were false mm. you feel me mm. and they made nigerians mad that oh this is what's going on to our brothers in south africa they're killing mm. us you know what i'm saying and when i did the research i found out that nobody was hurt you feel what I'm saying? Like, it was just police trying to control things and, you know, some people, it's a normal thing. The police is trying to control mass, masses, you feel what I'm saying? And, you know, the media just took it and blew out proportion. Social media as well played a big part in making things get worse. And, you know, that really affected a lot of things. And, you know, for me, I've had my, living in South Africa, I'm not going to lie, I've had my own fair share of you know, xenophobia and all of that, but that wouldn't make me change my mind and say, oh, I don't like South Africa and blah, 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 blah. Because there's a lot of amazing people in South Africa. Like I have a lot of friends, I have a lot, I've met a lot of great, great, good people in South Africa. So, because one person, you know, one person acts funny, I'm not going to take down everybody else. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's just, it's just being smart. It's just being, it's just, it's just, you know, basic wisdom. You feel me? And the same thing with you know it's everywhere in the world if you go to america if you come to america one person can be racist to you doesn't mean everybody's racist mm. you feel what i'm saying if you go to nigeria somebody can 
somebody in form one can scam you in Nigeria now and it doesn't mean everybody in Nigeria is a scammer. <laughs> you feel me? But, you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I get so, you. That's yeah. simply with South Africa. You, somebody's xenophobic towards you doesn't mean the whole South Africa is xenophobic. That's what a lot of people need to understand. And you know that that's for me, I, I really I could I understood that and you know, it didn't really affect anything apart from the fact that I feel like the government should have done more in controlling these things. You feel me? Making sure everybody understands that we are all one black people, we are all one African. Yeah and and you know that's one of the things i'm trying to you know preach with my music and my projects i'm trying to you know you raise the borders you raise the border lines the yeah. colonial masters created for mental you should be trying yeah. to have one africa we're all black people we're not we're not separated you know what i'm saying we're all black people we're all one africa so you know for me that i could have actually that was one of the things that fueled the project I'm working on because, you know, blending South Africa with Nigeria, it's like by force, by fire, all of you, you we must all be one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're using, we're using all the methods our leaders really use. We're using music, we're using dance, we're using art, we're using what we have as leaders. You know what I'm saying? So that's literally one of the things that's fueling my, my project. That's the, the feel me. So, yeah, that's like my view on that. That's dope, man. Mm. And let's yeah. bring it now to some good news. Let's talk about yeah. e-wallet, e you and Casper. Is FNB paying you guys? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because, you know, FNB, everyone's on e-wallet, e -wallet, man. If anybody at FNB is hearing this, I have a pending check with you guys. Just talk to who you need to talk to. Make sure everything is in motion. I'll be in South Africa shortly, so... <laughs> How much is the chip <laughs> worth so we can see if we need to make noise on it? I, I, I'm, I'm a nigga like a little billion rand, you know, so like a billion Let's... rand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave South Africa and it's e-wallet yeah. problem. So let's fly to where you probably are right now. You're in America, right? Yeah, I'm in LA. All right, let's, let's talk a bit about Mr. Quincy Jones. You yeah. met oh, Mr. Yeah. Quincy Jones and... What was the feeling at the moment? Yo, that feeling was that was a legendary. Period. Like that moment was legendary. I was like, "What am I saying? Who am I looking at? Oh my god, is this crazy?" So it's yeah. like my whole life was flashing right before me. <laughs> like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was yeah. it. My my whole existence as a producer was right in front of me. I was like, "What? Wow. Is this real?" It was, it was really crazy. It was, it was like it was a pre Grammy party. Yeah. And we had met, and then we was was hosted by Spotify. I can remember Spotify hosted that event. And you know, I walked with my friend, and then we just there, and then blah blah blah. And I just saw Quincy Jones and kind of just chatting with somebody I know. I was like, what? Yeah. I just went right there. I was like, my boy, you gotta do the link up right now, right now. Yeah. I was like, yeah, what's up? What's up? Then he told me. Uh, also Quincy, I don't know what he told him, blah, blah, blah. He just spoke in his ear. Because, you know, Quincy Jones is like, everybody wants to talk to Quincy Jones. Everybody wants to. When you see him, it's like talking to 500 people at the same time. Somebody's coming, somebody's leaving. It's like a whole interview. He just sits there on the couch and everybody starts talking. So then when he told him something, he's like, yeah, he, he should bring me. And then we should, he, you know, we started talking and he was like, oh, you make up for me? I was like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. We're here, we're here, we're here. It's hold just on, uh, a young disconnect there. Don't we stop just... the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There's this, a South African number is trying to call me, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I don't know, I don't have a say. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys should not hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. He was like, yo, come, I for beats up, bro, what's telling me, yo? So, it was like, oh. So the, he was like, don't stop doing what you're doing. Because, you know, Africa is, Africa's time is now. I was like, yes, sir. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go. Oh, God, this person keeps going. Yeah. Mm. So it was, like, it was like, don't stop doing what you're doing. Mm. I was like, of course, I'm not going to stop doing that. Then he was asking me about, you know, South Africa, actually. It was, it was asking about Mandela. It was, talking about, it was, it was telling me he met Mandela. 
Jeez. Yeah, he was telling me met Mandela. He was telling, he was telling me, you know, so much stuff about it. You know, his experience with Africa and all of that. Yeah, and you know, it was it was a good time. It was a good experience to actually, you know, have a conversation with him. You know, That's and all of that. And, and yeah, and then meeting Kanye. So from there, you know, yeah, Kanye West. Oh, that one was the craziest. I was like, yo, this is this is it. I've made it in life. I, I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, so, bud. I've got it. <laughs> so he was, he was sad to Bakuli. Bakuli is like, um, he's like an OG in the Nigerian music industry. He's an OG, actually. You know what I'm saying? So he 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 worked on uh, the lift off. You know, he worked on Watch the Throne album. Yeah. Kanye yes. and Jay Z and all of that. You know, he's one of the first people that actually. He used to manage the band, so the time when oh, wow. Kanye had signed the band, he was like really very much involved in everything. So he knew Kanye from then. So we were in, we we're here in LA, and then I met him at random at the party. He was like, "Yo, I've been trying to link with you." Blah 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 blah. blah. So he was like, "Yo, I'm going to Kanye West church on Sunday, you know, and I would like to introduce you to him because you know he was, he's been talking about Afrobeats." I was like, "What?" I like are you are you lying or you're for real? I like he's like, yeah, I'm for real. I'm like, okay. I mean you're out Sunday morning, six AM. <laughs> oh. So Sunday morning. Were you wearing Yeezy? Sunday morning, Sunday morning I pulled up to the crib. <laughs> we went we drove like an hour to Calabasas from yeah. LA. So we went there. It was like a whole experience. I'm not even sure. I, it was like a whole whole experience it's like it was different like that kind of church service was just different so when i got there you know i can't even go into details of how the whole process is where you get in and you know everybody will queue up and all that and then we got to the main event i was just waiting is kanye gonna come and they were like oh kanye traveled kanye traveled also uh he, he traveled out of the, the states i think they said he was like out of the state somebody was just saying that said oh kanye is out of state you know how some people just be talking yeah. like you know what's going on like my heart was broken in like two seconds i was like damn <laughs> it's driving an hour <laughs> i was like what i like nah something has to happen like there's no way kanye is going to be out of the state and i'm here like you know for some Yo, like two minutes later, I just saw Kanye walking out. Like, uh huh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's Kanye. <laughs> so Kanye walked in. Oh, then Kim, Kim Kardashian was like right behind him. Um, uh, Kendall. I was like, yo, this is the whole keeping up with the Kardashian gang in this building right now. And you, you know, it's like the church thing, it's not too many people. It's just like, uh, you know, just a. A, a few people that are really that are really close to them, you know. And first, you were like that whole church service was an experience. Mm. You feel me? It was a, you know? I've heard people say, "Oh, that stuff is cult. It's like a cult thing that people don't really know." And blah blah blah. If you go there, they go, "Bro, it was nothing cult, bro." That was like I felt. I saw like worshiping God from another perspective. Yeah, mm. you understand what I'm saying? Like from a very personal perspective, in in, in his own way, and Kanye is a genius. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I got to see how he was so emotional about everything he was doing. And they were so emotionally invested in how he was singing to God, how he was praising God, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I got to see one one like for like one hour I was not even moving I was just staring at this man like God this this is like this is some legend for shit this is not even this is not real you feel what I'm saying this is like I can't even explain it. and the whole feeling is just different you just being like a zone it's like it's like you in you in Jerusalem mm. That's with wild. Jesus Christ there it was just that kind of vibe that was what I was getting there you feel me and Kim Kardashian was like right next to me, looking like looking at me eyeball to eyeball. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh man, it's not about Kim. We talking about Kanye. No, 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 I'm saying like the whole experience. I'm trying to tell you guys like what I was going through. I'm like, yo, I like, you know what? There's you know, there's celebrities and there's celebrities. Like these yeah. are like celebrities to celebrities. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Sometimes you have to just feel like 
a fan again. Like that old moment, I was I was a fan. I'm not. A yeah. <laughs> I was a big fan. So I was like, so after the service, I met Kanye. My colleagues introduced me to Kanye. Like, yo, Kanye, this is Kido, the Afrobeat producer. I was talking about blah blah blah. blah, blah. It was like, oh, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. So we got talking, I'm not going to go into details, we talked about a lot of stuff, and then, you know, project especially that he's going to be working on and all of that. And, you know, just wait for it. If you guys just wait for it. And it was like, you know, the whole moment I got to, like, see Kanye West, you know, I touched the mood, shook hands, we were talking, you know what I'm saying? We had deep conversations, he was asking me about family, family, you know what I'm saying? It was that deep type of stuff. And... You know, it was like an experience I'll never forget. Uh, you know, after that we went, we hit the studio. You know, the rest I'm not even gonna go into details because you know we don't have anything. <laughs> we don't want to talk too much right now. Yeah. I'm also looking at the time. Like time is on our side, but I'm just gonna ask you. Uh, like, I got one, uh, and then Elsa's got one. Just yeah. The success of four. You know, briefly, like you guys are just hitting several numbers. That record is just breaking several records. Gold stage number yeah. two, gold in Canada, just big numbers. Like, how do you feel about mm. this moment that's happening with that song? Um, shit. I'm gonna say, you know, it's all God's blessings. You know, yeah, we can only do what we can. You know, it's, all, it's left to God to just crown our efforts and okay. take things to the next level for us. For me, you know, when I made four, I knew it was gonna go crazy. I knew it was gonna go big, but I didn't know. It was gonna be the biggest song in the whole Africa. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, that's that's God's blessings. You know, we can't really control something when it comes to music. And you know, right now, it just it all just became gold. Yeah. In yeah. America and gold in Canada, and that's like the first African record to ever do that. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? And and that's crazy. So, for me, I just feel grateful. I'm thankful for it, as you know. I'm working and creating more. We need like we need like hundred more falls from Africa. Yeah. And you know, especially from South Africa. We need South African music to go global the way Afrobeat is going global. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do. You see, I'm trying to do with my Afrobeat, South Afrobeat journey. So it's really gonna put people on the South African sound. I'm like, oh, why is the sound different from the normal Afrobeat? Oh, because there are South African sounds in it. Oh, okay. Let's check out the South African sounds. I'm a piano. Mm. You know, go house. This is amazing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that. That's that's like my vision. That's why I really want people to really see that there's so much good music on the continent of Africa, especially from Nigeria and South Africa. It's great music. You feel me? So. Now, yeah. Spe- speaking of someone that doesn't need to put on, but that clearly you two when you came together it was magic. Let's talk Chris Brown and Indigo. Yeah, so um, I met Chris Brown at the pool party in ATL, and you know, he was he's David's friend, of course. And David was telling me, "Oh yeah, this is my producer," and blah blah blah. And first he told me, "Like I need the records, where are the records?" <laughs> so, I was like, "Yo, you know, I got you, bro." And then, um, like two weeks later, we went, we came to LA. And then we went to the studio, we were like, yo, pull up to the crib, pull up to the crib. And then, you know, I came to, I went to the crib, it was in the studio recording. And then, you know, shout out to David. David was really instrumental in all of this. Was, David was just there hyping everything up, like, yo, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and, you know, I was, he was like, yo, play me some stuff. I played him, I remember I played him. The first thing I played him, he went crazy. He went really, he went crazy. Like, yo, what is this? This is African sound. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I played him, I played him a bunch of stuff. So for his project that was about to drop at that time, he, he picked two of the stuff. I, I played him. And then that was the two songs that we actually recorded that night. We made the songs and then, you know, the rest is HP, like they say. He really loved it. I remember we was playing the song. We were having like a house party. We had a house on the hills and we were having a house party and Chris was there and he played the record all night. Yeah. People were like, what song is it? What song is this? <laughs> we're like, this is my new record. Kido produced it. <laughs> this is my new <laughs> That's cool. Yo, man. Hey. And, uh, now I'm just then, thinking the same. Yeah, yeah, it was the same. It was the same. It was like, all, all the girls, they were like, yo, this is amazing. This is blah, blah, blah. 
and you know fast forward you know the way america works you, you even if you have a record and it, the artist is hyped about it and everything you don't be too happy till the song actually drop you know what i'm saying don't be too excited that's how i feel like i i i i nigga, drop it first let's see if it's real yeah. <laughs> i feel you and then boom and then yeah, boom time is on that's our side like Time is yeah. on that side. I wish we can keep this conversation going, but I guess yeah, when you pull up in South Africa, we'll pick it up. Um, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure, bro. But yeah, most definitely, we're definitely going to be spinning the single uh, with Casper E Wallet. I'm going to play it right now. Yeah, sir. Yeah, let, yeah. let me say something real quick. Let me say something real quick. Yeah. Let me say something real quick about E Wallet, right? So E Wallet just song got made for South African girls, especially because you know when I was in South Africa, you know, I had to like go when girls pull up, they want E Wallet. Oh. You know what I'm saying? When you go, <laughs> what? No, no, really, I love you know, I love, I love the idea of spending money on our women. I feel like our women deserve to be taken care of. Yeah, you feel me? So, and that's why I made that song. So that song is about men spending money on women. We have to spend money on them. So when they say I want to make my hair, we send them e wallet. When they say I want to buy buy a wig, e wallet. When they want to do their nails, e wallet. You I'm going to make this a public service announcement. You have yeah. spoken for all of us. But what exactly. happened if you, before you go, I just want to see if we all yeah. look conscious together. Can we see your quarantine hairstyle? Nah, you guys don't want to see that. He must I say like you eat all it. I look like a caveman right now. I look like a caveman. <laughs> Ah man, yo, this is dope. You know, this is Thank dope. you, thank yeah, you so much. For sure, for yo. sure, bro. Thanks for having me. 